So, in the last lecture we are basically dealt with how we will be handling the enthalpy and uh, today we will be looking at basically about the uh, laws of thermodynamics and also the uh, other thermochemical laws what will be required to handle the chemical reactions. So, uh, let us start this lecture with a thought process you are a big chemical reaction everything you say all that you do all that you see decide remember think or feel is nothing but the manifestation of the chemical reaction that is you. So, that is of course, uh, told by the Jim Eden and Sheffield University and which is true to some extent when you get into the biological aspect of it right. So, uh, what uh, basically we will be doing we will be uh, you know handling the chemical reactions and then uh, heat release during that in combustion therefore, we need to uh, use the laws of thermodynamics. What are the laws? How many laws you are aware? Any idea? Total? Somebody is saying 3, somebody, but actually there are total 4 laws. 0th law of thermodynamics, 1st law of thermodynamics, 2nd law of thermodynamics and 3rd law of thermodynamics. Okay. So, what we will do? We will not derive them, we will not also discuss at length, but however, we will try to recall what we had learned. If you look at 0th law of thermodynamics is basically talking about the how to uh, you know dealing with temperature. We say that two bodies have the same temperature as the third body when they are placed in thermal contact with each other separately. Okay. If the object A is thermal equilibrium with let us say C and the B is also equilibrium with the C. Therefore, object A will be thermal equilibrium with the B that is the 0th law of thermodynamics by which we basically measure the temperature. If you look at your day to day experience that what you do? You put the thermometer in your body in the armpit or on the tongue you know like then allow it to attain the thermal equilibrium with the body right allow certain time. So, that thermal inertia will be taken care and then that body temperature is same as that of the whatever is shown in your thermometer that is basically by the 0th law of thermodynamics. And first law of thermodynamics you know very well that whenever a system undergoes a cyclic process and in a cyclic manner however, the complex cycle it may be the cycle integral of the heat interaction is proportional to the cycle integral of the work interaction is not it. And that is being talked about during a cyclic process algebraic sum of work is proportional to the algebraic sum of heat. Okay. Then what will have it is a proportional then where you get the law internal energy. Internal energy? Nay, 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 internal is nay, nay. That you will have to look at the system, whatever the we the use the you know first law, okay, delta Q minus delta W is equal to du, right. That is for the system, this is for the cyclic process, okay. And there comes in the proportionality constant, Joule's constant, that is equal to J is equal to 1 in case of. SI unit whenever u is SI unit j is equal to 1. Okay. So, in the second law we say that heat cannot itself transfer from low temperature to high temperature in a cyclic operating device. Right? What is this statement? This basically it is impossible to have a cyclic operating device which will take the heat from the low temperature and transfer the same amount to the high temperature source right that is basically which statement Clausius right that is a Clausius statement but the kelvin planck statement is what it is impossible to have a cyclic operating device to observe certain amount of heat from a source and perform the same amount of work 
it is impossible that means the efficiency will be 100 percent is not possible okay that is the kelvin planck statement and this is basically constitute the second law of thermodynamics and the third law is basic entropy of a perfect crystal is zero at absolute zero temperature and this is not being used except to define the entropy okay because you will have to say entropy at the perfect crystal will be zero at the absolute temperature you know that means zero kelvin then you define then you do that but we don't use you use basically first law and second law profusely and zeroth law is very obvious okay so what we will be doing in our combustion we will be using the first law and second law of thermodynamics okay now first law of thermodynamic applied to a closed system we know delta q minus delta w is equal to d e okay what is this d e is it internal energy it is change in total energy which is nothing but change in internal energy plus change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy okay this is change in internal energy and this is change in kinetic energy right this one and this is basically change in in potential in a closed system if you look at mostly kinetic energy and potential energy is zero but that is that is not true for all the time okay keep in mind so therefore if that is zero right then what you will get de is nothing but du right when it is zero so therefore you can write down delta q minus delta w is equal to du for a closed system provided if d or delta k e is equal to 0 and delta p e is equal to 0 that is true okay generally when people say that what is first law of thermodynamics people say delta q minus delta w is equal to du but that is not true this is derived from the first law of thermodynamics and is it is handy to use in a closed system right and keep in mind that delta q is basically path function that means it will be dependent on the path and the delta w is a also a path function but the total energy change in the system is a point function or in other words du is also a point function right du is also a point function right the first law of thermodynamics for an open system what it would be right some people say that you know like basically delta q minus delta w is equal to what dh right but that is a little limited but if you look at this question elaborate one is this de by dt is equal to m dot i i means inlet if i say there is a system here this is your inlet i and this is your exit right exit then mass flow what is given in i and this is exit and keep in mind whenever you are talking about the open system basically the continuity has to be taken care right that means mass conservation has to be taken care right in this case like it has to be taken care and uh, then this is your if i take this as my reference this height is z i and if I take my this reference this is your z e right and it is moving with a velocity v i and the fluid is moving with v e. 
So, therefore, d e by d t is equal to m dot i h i is your enthalpy at the inlet this is not i species ok i means inlet i means inlet ok e means exit plus this kinetic energy v i square plus g j i is basically potential energy g is your gravity uh, acceleration right minus m dot i into H e plus V square by 2 plus G Z e plus delta d q, d q is means some heat is interaction is taking place you know this is your d q and some you know like uh, let us say some work is going on right. This is a fan which is rotating okay, that is your work done w shaft work you can say right. So, therefore, this is basically rate of accumulation of total energy in control volume this is your control volume right. This is your control volume C V control volume right and this is your net change of total energy of flux this one this portion is coming in certain amount of energy certain amount of energy is going out that is a net flux and this is your net heat interaction across the control surface because this is your control surface if you look at this is your control surface right. And uh, the other one is your rate of work done in control volume right. So, this you will have to apply in your uh, our open system whenever we are looking at uh, for combustion and whenever we are looking at closed system I will have to apply this first law right. You can you can think of using this one because change in kinetic and potential energy in a control mass system is very rare and in combustion system hardly it will be there ok. So, for a steady state if I want to uh, use this one for steady state what will be d e by d t is 0 and if there is a change in kinetic energy is 0 and change in potential energy is 0 and there is no work done d w is equal to 0 then what I will get? I will get m dot h i minus m dot h e is equal to d q is not it. And in some cases, we will be considering also adiabatic that means, there will not be any heat interaction ok, we will be doing that. Are you getting? This is the thing what you can think of, you can write down this is h i minus h e is equal to d q right, under this condition for ok, the change in kinetic is 0, change in potential is 0 and work done is 0 in combustion system there is no work done as such right there will be heat interaction there will be what you call enthalpy change or the kind of thing. So, therefore, the heat being generated is basically change in enthalpy at the inlet and the exit ok is that clear. And keep in mind that the when the work is done by the system will be positive ok work is done on the system is negative and heat is transferred to the system will be what? Positive heat is transferred from the system will be negative right. So, those those sign convention you should keep in mind. So, uh, if you look at second law means basically Clausius inequality which is nothing but that for any system whenever undergoing a cyclic process the ratio of sum of all in heat interaction to its respective temperature of the source or the sink you can say thermal reservoir is equal to or less than 0 right. This is your uh, Clausius inequality which is being used for basically uh, relating the entropy with the heat interaction right. And that is nothing but your cyclic integral delta q divided by t less than equal to 0 right. But for a system 
if you look at uh, this is equal to change in entropy will be always greater than equal to delta q by t and this is known as increase in entropy principle like there will be always entropy of a system will be increasing right and that is the true right if you look at what do you mean by entropy physically any idea this are degree of disorderness right that means wherever there will be heat interactions there will be molecules will be moving expanding temperature will go up then this disorderness entropy basically increases and that is happening with the mind if you remember that i had related entropy right with the mind and as today is the bombardment of informations and lot of noise is coming in your mind coming up in your mind therefore you should not use this internet mobile other things you know too much but sparingly you should use the whole country now is addicted with the internet a thing right now it is something coming up so therefore they are spoiling their mind <laughs> from baby to old man all are engaged in the what you call internet mobile whatsapp all those thing and that is causing a lot of noise and noise leads to your entropy increase entropy increasing means you become useless isn't it and that is happening and we are saying we are developed <laughs> so therefore you will have to also look at this thing in a combustion process there will be always increase in entropy right we will always try to minimize it of course that is a very difficult job particularly in combustion so therefore uh, second law of thermodynamics for a control volume and this is can be for a system right for control volume will be similar way ds by dt is equal to m dot i s i that means this is at the inlet keep in mind this is specific you know entropy at station i or i can say at inlet that is better i will write down at inlet and m dot i s c that is specific entropy basically specific entropy at outlet is nothing but your sc and dq by t and sg is at the g basically entropy generation right this is rate of change of accumulation of entropy right net change of total entropy of flux in this portions and uh, this is of course the rate of entropy generation in control volume and this is entropy of flow due to heat interaction across the control surface if there is a some heat interactions it will be taking place right so one has to use it but uh, we will be using basically this entropy in whenever we will be looking at chemical equilibrium then we will have to use entropy isn't it from that only we will calculate what will be the equilibrium composition of a particular chemical systems so we will be using that but uh, otherwise we will be using mostly the first law of thermodynamics huh? so what do you mean by stoichiometry because when you talk about it we will be dealing with some chemical reactions when you talk about chemical reaction we will be dealing with basically stoichiometry and stoichiometric is basically the elemental ba mass balance in chemical reactions right describing exactly how much of oxidizer has to be supplied for complete combustion of certain amount of fuel right so that is basically a mass balance what you do for example if i take this is 1 mole of methane is reacting with you know 2 moles of oxygen leading to the carbon one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water and releasing certain amount of heat right because this will be a exothermic reaction overall so therefore some amount of heat will be released and now by this what you are saying it is basically is it mole is balance here in this reaction in this reaction is it mole is balance or not certainly yes 
because in this case one mole left hand side one mole of methane two mole of oxygen three moles and in the right hand side one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of that means three moles in the left hand side three mole in the right hand side this is balanced but it need not to be true for all the reaction this is a just a example which i have taken it happens to be true but it is not true for all reactions but however if you take right mole one mole of the methane means basically 16 gram right if you look at left hand side two moles of oxygen means 64 grams total is how much something huh? 80 grams right in the left hand side in the right hand side carbon dioxide is 44 grams and water is 36 grams that means 80 okay that means mass is conserved right that is says no element of valence is that which is developing exactly how much oxidizer has to be supplied right and by this thing if mass is balanced that means everything is fine that is a stoichiometric reaction are you getting but is it true is it not defined your e is equal to mc square that means the energy will be converted into mass mass will be converted into energy right is it not defined because you are saying mass is conserved there is some amount of heat release right are you getting my point see if there some heat is there that means some mass will be consumed isn't it but here it is not some heat is released the mass is also conserved so is it true or not yes that is true that means the mass the heat release is very very low here in this case as compared to nuclear energy therefore the change in mass is so small that you cannot measure in any instrument therefore you are calling it as a mass is conserved are you getting so you can take some example you can refer my book uh, on thermodynamic there is an example you can look at it or you can maybe i will give an assignment for that okay so that you can find out yourself whether it's true or not okay fine so mass is conserved here but as i told it is number of moles is not conserved right whenever you are saying stoichiometric is basically means if more amount of oxygen is there as compared to stoichiometric we call it as a lin mixture when it is the quantity of oxygen is less than the stoichiometric proportion then we call it a rich mixtures right and so we will be discussing more about this stoichiometric in the next class and today we will stop over here thank you very much